Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at how to automate Eldritch Blast for D&D 5th Edition. Now you may be thinking, Nick, Eldritch Blast is just a regular attack cantrip, we can just roll that right from our character sheet. And that's true, but our version of this Eldritch Blast is going to automatically calculate and roll the appropriate number of beams based on our character's level. It will include things like Agonizing Blast, and it will include things like Genie's Wrath if you have a Genie patron, and will account for things like Lucky if you are a halfling with the Lucky ability. Now, in order to do this, you will need a pro account because we're going to be using mods. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Alright, so the first thing we need to do are install a couple of mods into our game. And the first mod that we're going to use is called Script Cards. This mod will be used to do a lot of the logic in the macro and will also present the output to our player. And Script Cards comes to us from the amazing Kurt Jagers. Kurt, thank you very much. This is an awesome mod and I absolutely love using it. The other mod that we're going to use is called Fetch, which comes to us from the Metamancer himself, Timaw, and Fetch is going to be used to help us determine the number of beams that we need to fire based on our character's level. Now, Fetch can be installed individually, or you can install what's called the Metascript Toolbox, which gives you a whole bunch of Timaw's scripts. This is what I usually recommend folks do because the Metascript Toolbox is incredibly useful and the more I learn about it, the more I find I use it in my games. So once you've got script cards and fetch or the Metascript Toolbox installed, we're ready to begin. All right, so let's take a look at what things are gonna look like when all is said and done. So Jolo is my warlock who is level six, which means that at level six, he should have two Eldritch Blast beams. So when we run our Eldritch Blast macro here, we can see that we run beam one and beam two, so we're calculating the right number of beams. If we roll a crit, we have the extra damage dice being rolled and we're summing things up so we know exactly how much damage we dealt there. And then we roll twice again for advantage or disadvantage for the other beam. And we're annotating that we can add three damage to either of these beams because of Genie's Wrath. And then additionally, if we look at the attack rolls here, we can see that we're re-rolling if Jolo gets a one because he's a halfling who has the lucky ability. All right, so let's see how we write the code for this. So I'm gonna minimize Jolo's character sheet. I'm gonna bring up my trusty notepad plus plus window and let's start writing some code. So to start things off, we're gonna put in exclamation point script and then two open curly braces followed by two closing curly braces. And this tells Roll20 that everything between these two sets of curly braces is part of our script card. So let's start out by getting our script card's title in here. We want it to say Eldritch Blast. We want to say it's a cantrip that has a range of 120 feet. So that can be done with a couple of lines of code that look like this. So here we see that we are putting in a title, which is Eldritch Blast. The left sub is what you see on the left side of this diamond right here. That's cantrip. The right sub gives us the range of 120 feet. All right, so now that we've got that title information taken care of, let's go ahead and make our attack rolls. And if we hover over the attack rolls, you can see that we're rolling a d20, and then we're adding Jolo's spell attack modifier to it. And then we repeat that for the second die roll. So the way we're going to handle that in our code is with lines that look like this. So we have dash dash equals. This means we are creating a numeric variable. And the variable name is attack roll one. And attack roll one is going to hold a d20 roll plus Jolo's spell attack bonus. So we're going to take the d20 and add seven to it in this case because Jolo's spell attack bonus is seven. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to store it in a variable called attack roll two. And now that we've made those rolls, let's display them to the user with a line that looks like this. So dash dash plus means we are displaying output to the user and the word beam here is what you see right here that's gonna be in bold on the left side of the script card. And then we're gonna say attack roll one, a space, a pipe, and attack roll two just to break things up. So that's gonna give us our output that looks like this. So that displays the results of the attack rolls to the user. So now let's work on the damage. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna put in another couple of blank lines. And the first thing we wanna do is calculate our regular damage roll. 
and Elder's Blast deals a D10 worth of damage. So we're going to say dash dash equals, so we're creating another numeric variable here called damage roll, which does a D10 worth of damage. And if we get a critical hit, then we're going to do another D10 worth of damage. So I'm going to create a second variable here that is equal to another D10. So now what we want to do is check to see if we rolled a nat 20 on either of our attacks to see if we should display the crit damage to our user. And that can be done with some lines that look like this. So dash dash question mark is a conditional. That means we're saying if attack roll one dot base. So we're going to look up here at attack roll one and dot base means we're only looking at the die roll portion of attack roll one. So attack roll one overall is the D20 plus Jolo spell attack bonus. But attack roll one dot base is just the die roll portion of that attack roll. So we're looking to see if the roll itself equals 20 or if attack roll two's base equals 20. So we're checking those two things. And if they do, then we're going to do everything between this square bracket and this closing square bracket and pipe. This is our conditional statement. So if we equal 20 on either of our rolls, then what we're going to do is display damage with the damage roll plus crit like what you see right here. So this is my regular damage die roll. This is my crit die roll. So we're going to display the five plus the six like you see right here. Otherwise, if it's just a regular non-critical hit, then we're going to display this right here, which is just the damage itself, which you see here on beam two. Neither of these rolls were in nat 20, so we're only displaying the regular damage die roll. So let's just copy this and run it as it is right now. And we'll paste it into chat here. And there we go. We see we get our beam with our attack rolls and our damage. All right, so this is a solid start. But now let's start augmenting it. Let's add in some things like Agonizing Blast, Genie's Wrath, and Jolo's Lucky Ability. So Agonizing Blast is an invocation that I think is required by law for every Warlock to take. And what it allows you to do is add your Charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blasts. So what I'm going to do is add a line into the script card that looks like this, that says dash dash equals Agonizing Blast, and I'm going to set that equal to Jolo's Charisma modifier. And then I'm going to come down here to our damage roll, and I'm going to say plus, and then open square brackets, dollar sign, agonizing blast. So we're going to roll that D10 and add Jolo's charisma modifier to it. And we can test that real fast. We'll just copy this, paste it in here, and we can see our damage now is a D10 plus four, which is Jolo's charisma modifier. Now let's extend it a little bit further. Let's get in the Jolo's ability to re-roll because he's lucky. And that means he can re-roll a nat one once and use the new roll. So for that, what we're going to do is go into our attack rolls here, and we're going to add in the following RO for reroll once if the number is less than or equal to one. So in math, less than or equal to one is the less than symbol with the equal sign. But in script card and regular roll 20 syntax for that matter, it's just the less than symbol. So this means if it's less than or equal to one, we re-roll the D20 one time. And we're going to do that again down here. So we will re-roll our D20s one time if they came up as nat ones. Awesome. And we also want to display this genie's wrath message here where Jolo can add extra thunder damage to one of his beams because he has the genie patron who gives him the ability to effectively add his proficiency bonus worth of damage to one of his attacks. So we're going to just come down here and we're going to make that line and it's going to look like this dash dash genie's wrath. You can add at Jolo PB. That's Jolo's proficiency bonus thunder damage to one of the beams and these square brackets with the bees inside them. This is saying I want to bold everything between this tag and this tag. So that three is going to be bolded like you see in the output over here. And then one last enhancement I want to make here is I'm going to come into the damage section and I'm going to paste in this line. I'm going to create one more variable called sum damage which adds the damage roll and the crit roll together. And then down here in the crit section, we're going to put in some parentheses and then we'll put in the sum damage 
variable so that we'll have the damage roll plus the crit being displayed like you see up here just because sometimes when I'm playing math is hard and so I like to make things as easy as I can for myself with that. So now that we've got the script card working properly for one beam, let's go ahead, let's extend this so that it will handle multiple beams for us automatically. So let's begin by opening up Jolo's character sheet and we're going to go to the attributes and abilities tab and we're going to create an ability like this one called beams. And this corresponds to the number of beams that get fired from an Eldritch Blast based on your character's level. So when your character is level 1 to 4, you get 1 beam. When you're 5 to 10, you get 2 beams. 11 to 16 gets 3 beams. 17 and up gets you 4 beams. So put this in exactly as you see it right here. And then we're going to refer to that in our script card to determine how many beams to fire. So to do that, I'm going to add another line into the script card that looks like this. Dash dash equals number of beams is another numeric variable. And what we're setting it to is this guy right here. So what we're doing is getting Jolo's character sheet. Specifically, we're looking at the beams ability of Jolo's character sheet. And what we're going to do is take Jolo's level and feed that into the beams ability. So we're going to say, okay, Jolo is currently level six. If we look at the beans ability and we say, okay, level six means two. So that falls between five and 10. So that means we're gonna fire two beams from our Eldritch Blast. This is fetch in action right here, the other mod that we installed at the beginning of the video. So we are fetching information off of the character sheet and then storing that in the number of beams. Okay, so now we know how many beams we're gonna fire. What we wanna do is run this code that many times and there are a couple of pieces to this so first we're gonna put in a line that looks like this dash dash colon cast blast and then at the end of the blast section here after we roll the damage we're gonna put in another line that looks like this with the dash dash less than symbol and a pipe and I'm just gonna indent all this a little bit so I know that all this code is part of the cast blast branch so what this does is it makes it so the script card can just call this chunk of code over and over again. And the way we're going to do that calling is with a line that looks like this, saying I am calling cast blast. Okay, so this really hasn't changed anything for us. What we need to do now is put this into a loop that says we're going to cast blast the number of times equal to the number of beams. And that's going to happen with a line that looks like this. We're gonna create this loop that says we are going to run that cast blast code a number of times equal to the number of beams. So we have this special value right here, loop counter. So we're gonna keep iterating, starting at the number one until we get to the number of beams. We're gonna cast blast and this percent with the pipe here, this means we are ending the loop. All right, so if we take this right now, Let's just copy this whole thing and paste it in. We run it and we see, okay, we have one, two, we have three beams, but Jolo should only have two because he's only level six. So what's going on here? When the script card runs, it runs everything. So it's gonna run all this stuff. It's gonna run our loop. It's gonna call cast blast twice because that's how many Jolo should do, but then it's gonna hit this and call it again. So what we need to do is tell script cards to be done after it finishes this loop. And the way we're gonna do that is with a line like this, dash dash X pipe. And that says, okay, you hit this mark and we're done. So let's copy this again, paste it in. And there we go. Now we see we only have two beams. Now to make this a little bit more readable, what I'm gonna do is come down to the beam section here and I'm gonna put in a reference to our loop counter. So it'll say beam one, beam two, beam three. So let's just grab all this again and run it. And there we go. Now we get our beams being numbered and that's just a little easier to read. But you notice though, we lost our genie's wrath. And that's because we run through here, we do the loop, we call cast blast, and then we exit. We never actually make it to genie's wrath. So what I'm gonna do is just cut this line here and move it up so it's right after the loop. And now when we run this, we should have that back. And there we go, beam one, beam two, the damage, Genie's Wrath, this is all working properly. Now, if you want, the other thing that you can do here 
is put in like an extra line to break up the beams. This text is very densely packed. So what we can do here is we could put in one more plus line with like just a dot in it. And then if we run that, we can get a little bit of space between the beams and that just makes it a little bit easier to read, but that's up to you. It just makes the script card a little bit taller in the chat, which takes up a little more space. That one's up to you whether or not you want to include it. So there you go, a souped up Eldritch Blast macro. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.